quick. Good evening. Welcome to Temple Baptist Church. Glad to have you here with us today. Let's all stand if you would please. We're going to sing glory to his name. So, 
Uh, we are going to go in our Bibles. We're going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. If I lift me up, he's going to put me down. 
And we, we've been taught, we, the Bible's very clear on that. You know, the pride cometh before the fall uh, it, it is, in the, is in the word, as well as those that, it, that he that uh, would exalt himself would be brought low. And he that abases himself will be, will be lifted up. And so uh, Jesus said uh, that if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So where do you think what that, that automatically tells you everybody's going to be drawn in what position? Up. Because if we lift him up and he's drawing everybody up to where he's at, then we're all being lifted up. Right. And that is a great thing. It's an amazing thing. Uh, you know, no greater encouragement can you find then we're going to be lifted up if we lift him up. And so that's what our purpose here and our goal at Temple Baptist Church is to get people to see through the word of God. The word of God will give them the picture of Jesus and where they need to be. Now, when we lift the word up, we're lifting him up, he draws them. Right, and there's a much to be said in the word about drawing power uh, from God via the Holy Spirit of God will draw you. A person cannot even be saved apart from the drawing of the Holy Spirit of God unto salvation. So drawing is a very, very important thing. Directionally, we're, we're looking at people uh, who we want to be drawn upwards. Now, the Holy Spirit's job is to draw us higher. It's never to draw us to Him. It's to draw us to Jesus. And then when we get up there, we're being drawn to Jesus. Jesus is not having you come to Him. He says, I'm taking you higher. God the Father. And they work together to get you where you need to be before God. And so it's an amazing work that they do. But you know what? The Holy Spirit will use us to be able to do that drawing, to be able to draw people. I mean, the word of God has got to be given. And that's through not just preachers and teachers, but also just regular Christians that will hand out a gospel tract and say, hey, here's some good news that can tell you how you can know without a doubt if you die right now or Jesus would come, that you can be in heaven when you die. Having no sin and having all your sin forgiven, a brand new clean slate standing before God. That sounds like a great deal, right? That sounds like a fantastic deal, and it is. Because he's already paid for it. All he has to, all you have to do is just accept the gift of God, which is free. It's a gift. He paid for it. He gives it out freely to whomever will come. He said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. That, that means anybody can put their name right there. And I thank God for that. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that he didn't just say, you know, whosoever among the Jews, I'd be out. I'd be out. I'm not Jewish. We're Gentiles. And so, but God brought the gospel to us because he wants us all to be where he is. So I'm thankful for that. So, there's many people named in the Bible. Now, some people in the Bible are noted for faithfulness. Others are noted for unfaithfulness. And uh, I'd much rather have the faithfulness part be said about me than, than the latter, amen? And, and so, some people in the Bible are noted for godliness, while others are noted for ungodliness. We've been given examples of both good and bad. Even in succession of kings between fathers and sons, we see in the Bible instances where the father was godly and followed God and the son became a wicked, evil ruler that didn't obey God, didn't follow God. However, we've also seen kings and fathers 
that were evil, but the sons that took over regarded God and were godly kings and blessed. So we've been given a lot of examples of the good and the bad, and we're going to be remembered for those things. And we, we see these people are written down for all time. Now, some people in the Bible are noted for standing for the truth, while others are, are noted for apostasy. Okay, and I'd rather be named for standing in the old paths of doctrinal truth. That's what we have. We give out the doctrinal truth as it is from the Bible. You can look and you can see with your own eyes the doctrine that's there. God made it pure and he made it perfect for, for all of us. And so some people in the Bible are noted for standing with God's man, while others are noted for standing against him. And of course, it's, be it's better to be named for standing with God's man instead of against him. And I find it of interest that Paul in his last few verses uh, of, of this last epistle took time to mention a man in the church that had withstood him. Now we must be observant. We must be able to recognize these for the spiritual health of the local church. It's important that you are aware. That you that, Listen, if you're not aware, then you're going to be ignorant. You will not know. You will have no knowledge of these things. So we don't want you to be ignorant concerning this, but there are those that come in from outside that want to bring the church down. They're not there to help. They want to join to the work. It's kind of like when they try to stop them from working on the walls and call them down into the, the, the valley and, and say, oh, we want to join with you. And he's like, what have you to do with this? No, I don't have time for this. And you, you're not, you don't have any place with God here. He saw right through it. He saw right through the bologna and cheese sandwich they were trying to get, give him. He saw right through it. And so uh, not everybody that wants to join up with you wants the success for you. Even those that claim to like you may not want you to succeed. It, it's just how terrible our world is. I wish it wasn't that way. I wish we could tell by somebody who is nice to us that they wanted our best interest. But unfortunately, we can't say that. Now that doesn't mean that everybody is that way. But you need to be aware that not everybody is rooting for you to win. They're not rooting for you to win. As a matter of fact, they want you to fall. They want you to fail. There are people out there that thrive on that kind of stuff because they can toot their own horn because I haven't been there and I'm so much better. There's a blackness. There's a decrepitness. And somebody that has these type of intentions. Right? Even, even Jesus himself and, and the people he chose, one of them had the devil. He wasn't, he wasn't the one that wanted success. All he cared about was the money in, his, in, the, in the bag he was charged with carrying and wanted to make excuses. Oh, this could have been used for that and this could have been done for that. How many people we could have fed with all that ointment that she just dumped all over his feet? That could have been sold for a lot of money. We could have given it to the poor and helped the poor. Now, that sounds pretty noble, doesn't it? Doesn't that sound noble? It sounds noble that we can take something, we can sell it, and we can help the poor. However, I wonder how many people would actually do that if they sold that and had that.
that money, would you really go and help the poor? Would you help those people? Would you feed those people? Would you put those people up? Would you help try to change lives of people? Or are you just talking? You know how much talking goes on? Judas did a lot of that. He did a lot of talking. And so people are noted for these things. Now, I want to... Uh, I want to uh, just, uh, there's a few here that withstood God's men in the New Testament uh, that I'm going to uh, read off to us. Uh, it, this is not by any stretch of anything long uh, tonight, but it's something worth noting. If, if the Apostle Paul took time to write it down, he did so that we would take time to pay attention because we're going to have examples of those kinds of people. And having examples of those kinds of people will also help us pick up on patterns. What do people do? They have patterns. People have patterns, right? We like to get up around the same time. We, we like to eat breakfast around the same time or skip breakfast if you're one of the ones that skip breakfast. How, whatever your routine is, Right? We, we build our routines because they bring us that level of security and that level of, okay, this is what, this is what I've carved out for myself and I don't have to be worried about anything that goes on in that time. I'm going to get up. I'm going to have my coffee. I'm going to flip on the news. Uh, I'm going to go do this or back in the day it was, I was going to read the paper. <laughs> uh, I don't think too many people do that. There's still some that do. Uh, but, you know, now they have the paper online, so people don't even have to buy the paper anymore. They, they can just look online on their tablets or their phones, and they can read through whatever articles they want to, go specifically to whatever's there. So they can bypass just about anything that's in the paper if they want to. Uh, but it's good to have these kinds of uh, examples for us. Now, he says, Alexander... The coppersmith withstood God's man publicly. Now we see in verses 14 and 15, he was talking about him specifically. Alexander, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. Now listen, the next statement may sound like Paul was mean. It might sound like Paul didn't have the right attitude. Now these are, this is what some people would tell you. But I want you to understand that Paul is dead on with what he says right here in this next statement. He said, Alexander the Coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Now, we could say, ooh, he wants something bad to happen to him. But that's not necessarily what he's saying. Now, were his works bad? Yes. And if you're rewarded on bad works, what's it going to end up being? It's going to end up being a bad reward, right? But listen, we find that this is a biblical attitude because of what Jesus told us in Revelation. He said, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. So, to pray that the Lord return the reward on their heads of their, of their works is not out of the scope. It's not being mean. But you know what? There needs to be... Remember, we did mention this uh, last week in one of the messages last week that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I, sh I will repay. God will take care of that. But you know what? It's all right to say, Lord, you know, may the reward of their work find them swiftly. That's not, that's not a bad thing, and you're not biblically wrong for doing that. Now in verse 15 it says, after the Lord re uh, re uh, rewarded according to his works, of whom be thou where also? For he hath greatly withstood our words. 
Now, some people will not submit to the man of God that watches for their soul. Too often they show open disrespect. Even open disrespect for God's man will follow his leading. This guy was one of those people. Openly, publicly, and very intently, he was against them and withstood their words. All right? That's not a sign of a good Christian person. All right, when God says that I put this person, uh, I put this man uh, as an under shepherd over you to watch your souls, and the Bible talks about being subject unto those and, uh, and, and th that are watching over your souls, and that we're, we're here to follow the leadership of God. All right, and that's that's what we need to do. Now, this guy Alexander, he was one that withstood. Their words and showed them disrespect. Secondly, uh, Hymenaeus and Alexander spoke evil of God's man as he stood for truth. Now, Hymenaeus in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18 through 20 says this, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them Minus war and good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning the faith, have made shipwreck. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. That is huge. Did you realize that the possibility could, could be there that someone could be turned over to the devil for a learning lesson? These guys went beyond the woodshed. That's hard. Give me the woodshed any day of the week over something like that. That they may learn not to to blaspheme. The man of God is charged in Jude verse 3 to contend for the faith once delivered and in 2 Timothy 4 1, through, 1 and 2 to preach the word of God as, people, uh, as, as it is the people as they are. Some will not stand for contending or doctrinal correctional type preaching. We're we're in a day where preachers like me, they don't want. Because I'm preaching the truth as it is. I'm preaching that we need to be corrected. But you know what? I'm not preaching that you need to be corrected. I'm preaching that we need to be corrected. Do you see the difference there? <laughs> I'm including myself in that correction. Because... As a man of God, I would, I would hope that any man of God would want that for himself. Mm -hmm. That I need correction. I have not stepped out of the veil of sinful flesh. I'm still in it. I'm stuck in this thing. I don't like it. And I'll thank God when I get a new one that has no sin. <laughs> That's exciting. That's just as exciting as no pain, no sickness, no sorrow, no parting. Hey, having a body that I don't have to contend with. Yeah, sign me up for that. I'm good with that. But there are people that will not tolerate that. And it comes right back to Timothy because there, the time will come, and of course now we can say the time is now, it's already here, that they will not endure sound doctrine. Not that they just won't tolerate it, but they will not endure it. Because it's something that, you know, when you think of it, you have to endure something, it's not a pleasant thing. No one no one says, I need to really just endure this day at the beach. I need to endure the food at this restaurant. I've been to a few restaurants where I did have to endure the food. That's never a good thing. 
When the parking lot is empty, it speaks volumes about what's inside as far as the food goes. But you know, the whole different, there's a whole different light when you're talking about a church. Because when you look at our church a lot, it's not full. But you know, we, 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 we can make some pretty good debts out there in the parking lot. You know, but you know, when you have some, you know, certain people that will, will do, a lot of people will drive separately and stuff like that, you know, you can fill up your, you can fill up a lot pretty easy. But like, you know, look, you can look at our lot and be like, well, it's not overwhelming. It's not teeming with all these cars and therefore something must not be right inside. But see, we're doing what's right. We're preaching and teaching what's right. We're standing for what's right. It's that they won't endure what's right. Because now our world has taught people. And remember, you're being taught by someone or something at all times. You could be taught by yourself. You could be taught by your neighbor. You could be taught by your job. You could be taught by... You're being taught by somebody. Okay? The world is teaching that good is bad. And the bad is actually good. The right is wrong. And wrong is actually right. And so now people have this mentality that I can't go to one of these churches that are hammering out that there's only one way to get to heaven. Because that's just not a great idea. What if I don't like that way? Well, see, it doesn't matter if you like that way. It's the way you have to go. There's many different, there's many different times where I've been in a situation where I did not like where I had to go to get to where I needed to go. But there was only one way to get there. Because, you know, you look around what we're in here. The season of orange. Did you see all the new blooms everywhere? All the orange blossoms every place. Everything's getting torn up. Things get shut down. Now they're forcing you if you want any kind of no construction, then you got to deal with a whole horde of traffic because nobody wants to deal with the construction. But listen, it, there's been times when I did not like the way I had to go but it was a way I had no choice but to go. That's how it is with God. You know, they'll call you narrow-minded, but listen. That's how broad-minded God is. How can I be any more broad-minded than He? This is what he said. I have to do it whether I like it or not. I have to. Because he told me that's what I have to do. Many of us, you know, there, there might be some out there that just don't want to love one another, right? There's a giant, a, a giant theme about Christians loving one another that and there's many different verses. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. But we're supposed to love one another. But you know what? I guarantee most of us don't like that, that we have to do that. Why can't I just leave them on their own and not, not love them? Well, the Bible, now, this is where you kind of get a, a, a little bit of a break. The Bible doesn't say nothing about liking them. You don't have to like me. Did you know that? You are biblically not charged that you have to like me. And you may not. And that's your right. But you have to love me. Because God said that's the very evidence of your salvation. That we would like, and that we would not just love each other, but we would prefer one another. Do you know something? It's hard to prefer someone when you don't like them. So even with that, I have to 
often kind of come around in my thinking that it's not logistically plausible for me to love somebody and not like them. I don't have to like everything they do, but we're supposed to be preferring one another. But these people, they just won't stand, they, don't, they just won't take it. They just won't take it, they won't endure it. Thirdly, Hymenaeus and Philetus argued against doctrinal teachings of God's man in 2 Timothy 2, 15 through 19. We see, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun, that means you put it away from you, shun it, get away from it, profane and vain babblings. Oh, sorry, social media, we probably shouldn't have you. Because there's nothing but vain babblings on any social media. But they will increase unto more ungodliness. Well, that sounds about right. And their word will eat as doth a canker. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus? Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already. And overthrow the faith of some. Listen, this is why you got to be careful what you share if you're not sure if you're sharing what's biblically correct, because you just might throw a, monk, a big, huge pipe wrench into somebody else's faith and overthrow it. Not everything you see on these reels on, on, on people that are up talking about biblical things or, or spiritual so-called spiritual things not all that advice is actually biblically accurate if you have questions you have preachers you can ask them about it hey I heard this it seems like a, and a lot of it will seem like it makes sense or seem like it would, would be something that we should think about but you know what not everything that is said you need to take to heart but you can take it to heart when you hear it here because of the fact that it's coming straight from the Word of God. It's what God said. You can put faith and confidence in that. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. God's man is to be the student of the Bible, prone to study, and to teach. You stick with your pastors, you'll be all right. Some people are teachers instead of students, and some leaders instead of followers. They, as a general rule, will not learn from or be led by the pastor. Lastly, Diotrephes is spoken of, and he spoke maliciously against God's man. In 3 John, verse 9 and through 11, I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he, hath, which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. Now many of the churches have people or families that, uh, that love to have the preeminence in the church. They, they, want to be, they want to be seen. They want to be heard. They want to be listened to. They want to have their say, and it won't matter who says what, they're going to interject, they're going to tell you for sure what they say, uh, because that's just important to them for you to hear what they say. And I'm always leery of people who have to just be seen or bragged on, that's a sign that you should probably watch them a little bit more careful. I, I don't know how many times I've said, I don't want bragging. I, you brag on Jesus. That's what you can brag on. You can brag on the word of God. You can brag on all that stuff. I don't need any of that. I'm not here for the pat on the back. I'm not here for the good job. Right? I'm not, I'm not here for that purpose. 
But many are. They must increase and he will decrease. That's how they operate. But even John the Baptist put it right when he said, He must increase and I must decrease. That's the important thing. It's making a lot out of Jesus. It's making a lot out of his word. Remember, he's magnified his word above all his name. We should do the same. Magnifying the word of God, magnifying God, magnifying uh, his, his, his blessed power, his glory. And give God glory in the church. That's what we're, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Giving God glory in the church. Not giving, not giving people a headache in the church. Amen. <laughs> so uh, that's all I have for this, uh, this evening's message. And just be aware that not everything that's on the inside is where it needs to be with God. So that doesn't mean that you should, you know, cut people off and do all that or just assume. You, people tell on themselves what their actions, their actions will tell on them. That's how it works. And so, but we are charged to be aware. Just be aware. Just watch. You'll see. All right. Let's uh, let's start our prayer request tonight.